The mad thing about the pub landlord is it is an accident. I, I never came up with it in itself. I never sat down and worked it out. Um, uh, we were in Edinburgh, and it was when I was working with Harry Hill, and we had a gap in the show, and the show was in a was in a in a bar in uh, the Edinburgh Fringe, and I said, "Well, why don't we fill the gap by saying that the the act the compare hasn't turned up, and the barman in this bar has offered to fill in." And he kind of went, "Yeah, whatever." And I went on and did that, and it and with a couple of ideas, and it worked. And I came off stage, and then I start you know writing these things down, more ideas down while Harry was on. Went back on, did a bit more, that worked. And then and then we had a run in Edinburgh that was like three weeks and by the end of it, I had an act. And it was complete a complete accident. Well, the thing about, the, the, the thing about being in character is everyone knows you're not, you, when you, when you a t tackle a topic, they know you're coming at it not at face value. They know you're coming at it from a, from a different angle. Although, of course, people can take what you say at face value which is the sort of always the, tr the trap or the tricky bit of doing a character. But I mean, the, 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 what is really good, what, what you can do with a character is rather than come on and go, come on and go, isn't this attitude awful? What you do is you come on and you show that it's awful and you, and you take it and you, you can drive it into the ground. I mean, I had a piece of material, the tour before last, which was about, you know, the idea kids don't work, kids don't know the meaning of hard work anymore, you know, and all that sort of thing. And then, and that, that, I started from that point of view, that premise, and ended up by the end of it proposing that, you know, everyone under the 18 be building pyramids and being <laughs> in chains and all that sort of thing. And the audience going, woo, like that. Because they, they know that you, you can start somewhere that sounds actually relatively kind of anodyne or so kind of sensible. And you could take it somewhere really crazy if you think like that. Stand-up's enemy is distraction, right? And corporate shows are very often put on in, in environments where there are multiple distractions. But the thing is, is because you're, you're basically a guest at a corporate event when you're hosting or you're appearing, um, it's not your show. So the different, it's the difference between playing a theatre where everyone's come to see you or going to an event where they go, and now we've got someone on who's going to talk to you. And they're on a table, there's 10 people on it. You know, if you've got these banqueting tables, 10 people on the table, half of them have got their back to you. So there's a distraction. There's drink, there's another distraction. There may be people catching up with each other they haven't seen in ages, or they're sat next to someone they don't want to sit next to. There's a distraction. They've got awards they may or may not win that evening. There's another distraction. Maybe, maybe they've just had a bollocking off their boss. It's not like they're at the theatre to, to chill out. So you've got all these added distractions. They may not particularly care for you in the way that uh, uh, somebody who's bought a ticket to your show does. So there's all these, all these things coming at you. Then you always get the thing where someone goes, whatever you do, don't have a go at table 11. You are not allowed to speak to table 11. And very often when you do that, afterwards, table 11 go, why didn't you have a go at us? And you're like, well, that's because someone in the middle was um, covering their ass from getting into trouble. So... What a corporate gig has is all these distractions built in and all these things they have to deal with. And, and I mean, I, I actually like the challenge of trying to hack through that stuff. I mean, even in a big room like the Grosvenor Hotel, you know, uh, when there's like 1,200 people in there, just getting them to all listen is a, is, a, is a thing in itself. So all that sort of stuff. And I really like the challenge of it. And I really like the thing. The bonus of playing a corporate is you come to a room where everyone knows basically who everyone else is. Everyone knows what the pecking order is. So if you go down and you, you get start talking to people, you tap into that in a way that you never have in a theatre because everyone, no one in a theatre knows anyone else, right? It, it's a different, you get a different dynamic. So, I mean, corporates have their, their it swings and roundabouts, let's put it that way. It presents its own problems because, because, like I say, I mean, at a, a theatre show where they've bought a ticket to see the pub landlord, you, they expect you to come on and be horrendously rude to people. And uh, sometimes they, you may be a household name, but they might not like you. You know, <laughs> it's no guarantee of anything. And the other thing is, is you do get that thing where people are, I'm not going to, I'm not going to let you take, I'm not going to take the piss out of me. And it's kind of like, well, you know what? It's better if it's better if you just let me roll with it, and we'll go on to someone else in a moment. Don't worry about it. So there's all that to deal with. But um, that's part of the fun about corporates is 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 ta is tapping into that. And also, I mean, you know, if you if you trip across someone who's a general manager that everyone knows and i always ask when i do corporate i ask to not know who's there 
Um, I like to know what the company is, but I don't like being told Derek's on table 12 and you've got to have a go with him and he's the one with the, with the, with the ginger ponytail because that'll be hilarious. Because if I go, if I make a beeline for him, it looks fixed. And the best way to do those things is for them to be real and be organic and trip over these people, you know, trip over the graduate trainee, trip over, I mean, they're, they're always, you always, when you find the finance guy, everyone hates the finance guy. So he's always a, he's always a gem to, to discover, but it's better if you go, I always find for me, it's better if you kind of go truffle hunting. But, you know, sometimes being a household name, they might not, like I said, they might not like you. They might, they go, might, they go well, why couldn't we get, where's Michael McIntyre? We had him last year. <laughs>
a big part of a big part of these corporate things and a big part of these awards things is keep it moving, keep the energy going. Uh, ne never, never expect anyone's attention span to last that too long. And that's not, a, and I don't mean that in a bad way. You know, that you're at a party very often. You know, and the, the, if a conversation goes on too long, long at a party, if someone outstays their welcome, you know, it spoils the evening. So it's all about being punchy, I think. Well, the pub quiz we do for corporates is really very, very simple. Um, uh, uh, I host it. Um, you organise yourselves into tables or into into teams. So either it's the allotted tables you're on, um, and you 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 all play off against each other. It's as simple as that. And and it's a competitive, the competitive element fed into a corporate event. I think is really really good fun. And the times we've done it before, we did one for for VW for all their parts people for their parts servicing outfit which is massive operation in the uk and we would do we would you do general knowledge you do sport you do whatever music but you also do like a picture round which is very close up pictures of vw parts and you've got a whole room of people racking their brains about their speciality and that you get people being competitive about what their thing is that's gold dust in a room that like that you got you know you, you that really sets the thing off and you can do that as long or short as you want the company can set their own questions um, their own topics and all that sort of thing and that that works really really nicely and just to you know we'll write you a bespoke quiz you take part in it what we tend to do is give the winners a frozen chicken so that they're, what they're really what they're really playing for is fun doesn't really matter but um the times we've done that it's been it's been really great fun and you know the technology's crept in now that you could you could do it with tablets so the scores add themselves up or you can do it the old-fashioned way with bits of paper and everyone mark each other's bits of paper it's good fun <laughs>